Hello, this is Nick Dutch again. Um, please do forgive if you can hear it, the humming noise in the background. That's just my dehydrator. I'm preparing some apples to make some Turkish apple tea, which I'm really looking forward to this summer. Uh, I got a private message from Aya 1948, uh, and the question is basically, what could I say to people who tried doing astral projection and have basically got bored with trying to get the results and basically people who just give up with astral projection and other things. So the first thing I would say is if you don't play with it, it doesn't get better. If you don't research different states of mind associated with uh, the feeling of an astral projection, it's not going to get better. You've got to practice um, and see this as a, an older state of consciousness exercise. A lot of the books which I read when I was getting into occultism for the first time made like um, a presupposition that whatever the results were, they would be 100% reliable, the work you'd have to put into them would be very, very slim or slight, and that the exercises in question were just very, very basic. This is a lie and a fallacy. This is written by people who just want to fill in space in a book so they can make money. It's not for any, it doesn't mean there's no real analysis of the phenomenon going on there. That's why I've recommended the book by Sylvan Muldoon and Harold Carrington, because I've read it. It's the closest thing to a scientific breakdown of the, pro of the process you've got to go through. For me, it took a couple of years for me to actually get my full conscious astral exteriorization. These things do not happen overnight, despite what some New Age books seem to imply. And, of course, it's made worse by the fact that there's lots of New Age believers out there um, who don't have the commands of the English language of a sufficient level and depth to be able to explain what they have experienced. And as a result, there's a lot of woolly thinking, fluffy language, um, and a lot of very, I would say, inappropriate communication about a subject which is really rather complex. This is another reason why I suggest that people be skeptical of various uh, claims that people make because if you want to try and get closer to the truth you want to try and get closer to the truth and this requires experimentation to work out what is real and what's not now if you've had a failure that could be a good thing because it demonstrates there's something about the way in which it's been explained to you which is in fact incorrect now I would say the phenomena is real because I've experienced it I would say the phenomena, all types of psychic type phenomena, are difficult to reproduce. So, and there's always someone in the world who will turn around to you and say, no, it works, I can just do it like that, you know, just dead easy. They are sad, pathetic people who are trying to control you, um, and they're just trying to bully you. They're no different to the extreme evangelical, fundamentalist, um, conservative, silly billies who are trying to convert you to their religion because that's the same as what a lot of these new age people do you got to discard certain forms of approach and basically for want of a better phrase test everything and trust that which is true start with a psychological attitude and say okay well all this stuff is probably just psychological anyway let's see what happens all right, see it as being something which could help you to learn how to concentrate better, to learn how to develop a more focused mind, first and foremost. And if something else happens on the way, then great. And if it doesn't, then don't worry about it. But essentially, the more you practice, the more you can get close to something interesting occurring. If you, know, if you don't play with it, it won't get better.